So, um, I thank you guys for being here. Um, my name is Adam Mansour, as you mentioned, and I'm a junior studying anthropology. And today I'll be talking about my experience uh, with human centered design and some of the themes that I've noticed um, throughout my time at Cal and some of the main things I've learned. Great. So, in my time at Cal, I've had the opportunity to take classes across a whole host of disciplines. Um, been a really great opportunity to take classes in the computer science, art history, um, design itself, and engineering, and they've all sort of shaped the perspective through which I've approached human centered design as the field that I want to um, pursue professionally. So, essentially, what is human centered design? Uh, idea which um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, one of the main human centered design firms um, that's really led the approach defines it very broadly as understanding people in order to make solutions uh, that solve their fundamental needs. And at its core, um, anthropology is really what addresses that, um, because it's the study of humans. Um, but first, I want to address some ideas of what people think anthropology is, and <coughs> the anthropology I'll be talking about. So people often think um, of Indian Jones, archaeologists, and will ask me about my web collection, whether I watch bones. Um, and the anthropology I'm more interested in is sociocultural anthropology, um, and broadly as a study of humans studying people cognitively, biologically, linguistically, um, and socially. So if you've ever taken an anthropology class or have any exposure to anthropology, you'll have heard the name of this man, um, Bronislaw Malinowski. Um, he was one of the early anthropologists who promoted the practice of participant observation, really going out, living with the people you're studying um, to understand um, their perspectives. He took a really methodological approach to understanding how people think and how they live. And he defined the goal of um, ethnography and anthropology as to grasp the native's point of view, his relation to life, and to realize his vision of his world. And thinking back to the definition of human-centered design that IDEO gives, um, they're not too far off. Um, anthropology in the academic setting is really um, just providing the first stages of um, the human-centered design process. In practice, in business settings, um, this often goes by a few different names. So one, one of those is human factors, <laughs> usability research, user experience research, a lot of research going on. And um, all with the end goal of making a product, a service, or an interface. Um, and this is generally the side that I tend to be on when not in school. So in um, there are a few internships, and um, in a club I'm in at Berkeley called Berkeley Innovation, um, where we do human-centered design consulting. Um, I've gotten the experience to do usability research and user experience research for um, a few different companies, and that's really sort of informed um, the themes I'll be talking about today. So together, um, through anthropology and um, some of the experience I've had working in human-centered design, I've learned a few key lessons. Um, first, be an outsider. Second, appreciate abstraction. And third, that blue will change your life. We'll get to what that means later. So first, um, being an outsider. So just as Malinowski went um, and studied in the Turpin Islands where um, he was an outsider very clearly, um, I've been an outsider in some um, my experience as well with um, the it really helped um, and informed the way I conduct anthropology. So this past summer, um, fresh off of taking the anth medical anthropology class, where um, I wrote about the potentials of technology and wearable technology in healthcare, I went to work at a company called Proteus Digital Health that makes um, digital sensors that go inside your pharmaceutical pills. So when people hear that, they generally think of some big brother scheme, which I'll leave up to you. Um, but essentially, your doctor can see, um, and you can see when you've taken your medications, 
and on an interface on an iPad like that, while you wear um, a patch that tracks your, your movement sort of like a Fitbit. Um, so coming in to, to work at Proteus, um, I was very aware of sort of how scary this all sounds. And, um, and having just been in the academic side of things, I felt very much on the outside um, in my first days, but realized quickly that in, human, in the human-centered design going on at Proteus, this was all very normal. Um, so the experiences of taking a pill um, with a digital sensor was very routine and understood by a lot of people that worked there. <clears throat> I found that as an outsider coming in with a fresh, fresh perspective of that this is scary to most people, um, we are able to come up with a lot of um, new insights and uncover new needs that users would have that sort of get ignored and that you can easily move past once you get really entrenched in the physical design of an interface and a product. The next is appreciating abstraction. Um, so through uh, our history classes I've taken here and computer science classes, I've had exposure to a new take on abstraction. Um, when most people think abstract, I think this is where your mind goes. Uh, Picasso, and, you know, strange interpretive art. And that's generally what I thought as well. And then I took um, CS10, taught by Dan Garcia. This is an introductory computer science course um, for non-majors, where you use uh, this program called SNAP, um, sort of a graphical programming interface, to, to code, simply. So you can drag these all together and build code um, with these different blocks. And in our class, we learned about the concept of abstraction in a, new, in a way I had never seen before. And that was that you could make new blocks that combined functions of plenty of smaller blocks into one. So you could make a function B, for example, that represented all of these other, um, other functions. And in seeing that and understanding the big picture of say B and what B can produce, the image on the right, and also thinking about the electrical engineering of the bits behind the computer, behind the scenes, that this dragging and dropping on my screen could shape and really change the way I thought and forced me to start looking and observing at the world from the big picture of pictures on the right and the very little picture of the bits behind the screen and what was working um, as I was dragging and dropping. The third um, that blue will change your life. So um, this last I'll send really glad to some people, others don't um, uh, find it as much, but it's my favorite. So um, one day a few years ago, I went to take in um, and just sat in on an architecture class. Um, I didn't know the professor, I didn't know the title of the course, I really didn't know anything about it, and just sat there for an hour and a half. And that day they were talking about beauty. And so as everyone else is scrambling taking notes because they're actually taking the course, um, I just sat there and listened to the professor as she went on and on about the beauty of the tile work in the ceiling of this mosque um, and the intricacies of the calligraphy um, she saw and how ornate everything was. And she went on and on on what felt like eternity and stopped. And she said this, geometry is great, but blue will change your life. <laughs> and so while everyone in the class was sort of just what, like what, or didn't even notice, um, it really stood out to me in the fact I may have been sleep deprived or just really in the zone, but it really stood out in that human-centered design, you can really focus on the usability of a product. You can focus on the nitty gritty of the code that you're using to build something and um, the product like what Proteus makes and focus on the pills and the little picture. But stepping back um, away from the anthropology and the, the finite details to realize that the big picture experience really sticks with people. And um, 
generally the sense of beauty that people see in um, a mosque, for example, and the ceilings, is just as core to human-centered design as usability and um, the little picture um, from day to day. So I hope that you can take these themes into whatever part of your life um, find fit, be it design, um, your relationships and interactions with people, or even just how you observe the world that found out they really changed the way um, I see things, and I hope that we can do the same for you. So, thank you.